So to to give us an insight into making the right investment uh, decisions, we have in the studio Elvin uh, Wong, the Chief Executive Officer of Equities Tracker. Elvin, how are you? Welcome to Subnama Studios. I'm well, uh, Michael. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for being a guest on BizTalk. Eh? Yeah. Okay, uh, what is Equities Tracker and uh, how, to what extent will it help potential investors uh, in Bursa Malaysia? So one of the uh, biggest issue we found, uh, yeah. what, what was the problem that we're facing, was that um, a lot of investors that uh, do start investing, especially retail investors, yeah. um, uh, the first few trades they actually don't make money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, we actually went down and really had a deep study and understand why this happened. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time is that investors think that they are investing but actually they are speculating. I see. So what we what we do at Equities Tracker, we try and move them from the speculation mindset, uh, but into an investment mindset. So mm -hmm. when you're in an investment mindset, um, you're thinking, you look at uh, not just quick returns, where mm -hmm. you put money today, you make money tomorrow. So inform the decisions and not gambling. Eh? Not gambling, yeah. yeah. I see. So, so, yeah. <laughs> okay. so who are your clients anyway? Yeah? Uh, our, our clients include regular investors, okay. um, high net worth investors, um, investment banks are our clients, uh, brokers are also our clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, local and abroad as well. I see. Yeah. Okay, how do you value uh, your business uh, when analyzing a company? Uh, uh, similar variables are used. How does Equities Tracker uh, differ uh, with other companies when analyzing, you know, uh, listed companies and their worth? You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you've got some slides to explain <laughs> all yeah, this to yeah. people. Uh, eh? um, you know, what? our whole idea was that how do we simplify investing? Okay. How do we make it simple, right? Mm -hmm. So what we came up with was, um, so how do we differentiate ourselves is that actually we use a lot of data analytics um, okay. to actually come up with decisions. So, you know, uh, what we do is actually enable uh, inform investment decisions uh, use, being data driven. I see. So one of the simple things that we have done um, was that uh, we put three simple rules together. Mm -hmm. We're saying that um, if we find we find investments that can compound over the long term, mm -hmm. um, one of the first things they must have is uh, continuous net profit. I see. Which means that every single year, rain or shine, they still make profit. The okay. second criteria was actually paying dividends, right? Mm -hmm. So which means that uh, every single year they also pay dividends. Not only they make profit, they also pay dividends. Mm -hmm. And lastly, they must have operating cash flow. Very important, mm -hmm. yeah. So when we actually put this together, um, you know, we got some pretty amazing results, which uh, you know we'll we'll be showing later. Yeah, because I want to look at some slides uh, showing that how uh, your company performed and all that. But before yeah. that, uh, do you provide? Uh, uh, advisory services clients to to buy and sell or more importantly when to buy and sell yeah uh, we actually don't provide any advisory per se okay um, but what we do show because we believe in empowering individual investors okay. because if we give them what to buy what to sell you know mm -hmm. we're not really empowering them with you know giving them something to um, a fish mm -hmm. uh, so uh, giving them the fish instead of teaching them how to fish right okay. so one of the things that uh, we do is that um, uh, we actually train them we, we bring them through of you know uh, uh, very simple training uh, to show them how they can do it themselves so uh, from the slide it shows that uh, uh, actually has done quite well compa comparatively right uh, yeah, we have, yeah. Uh, what kind of percentage are you talking about compared to others? Eh? So, you know, we always benchmark ourselves against uh, markets, not just internal, but external as well. Okay. Uh, so this was a, so what we do to help some of our uh, our students who come through our education yeah. uh, is actually, we actually publish our portfolio. Um, and these are our portfolio returns uh, since almost about maybe two years and two months. Okay. Um, and we've actually beaten the index and... Um, and uh, and all the other index indices, if you can see. So you talk about the returns over ten years. Uh, yeah. Uh, what do you have to say about that? And you analyze that. So what we did was uh, uh, earlier, you know, we spoke about the three things of how do you make um, investment simple. So which is um, having net profit, having dividend, having cash flow. Okay. Now what we did was we we put this through all the data that we have, uh, and it filtered out hundred and forty nine companies. Mm -hmm. So we put this hundred and forty nine companies together. Okay. Okay. Right, uh, and we benchmarked it against the index, against savings, against mm. unit trust over the last ten okay. years. Um, the return was actually three times, which means it was an absolute, very passive, uh, very simple strategy, uh -huh. but very extraordinary returns.
but you really needed comprehensive information to arrive at those kind of uh, yeah, investment decisions. Yeah. We went through basically millions of data points to get to that. So yeah. Before I go to the break, uh, briefly, are there opportunities in a down market? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so what we do is we practice this thing called value investing, okay. um, which means that uh, when markets come down, uh, we actually are quite happy about it because okay. that's where we get to buy at discount. Okay. So when we stop look when we start looking at investments as long term, mm-hmm. then um, you know opportunities uh, you get logo companies. Yeah, uh, so, uh, so a lot a very interesting topic. A lot more to talk about stock market investing. I myself want to place my money here and then all that. But then hold your thoughts, Alvin. We'll take a short break and we'll be back after these uh, messages. Stay with us. Welcome back. Uh, we are talking to Alvin Wong, uh, the Chief Executive Officer of Equities Tracker, on making the right investment uh, decisions and hopefully to maximize your profits. Alvin, uh, you have mentioned that uh, the index based yeah. on the 30 component stocks uh, may not be that fair or accurate uh, assessment or be an accurate assessment of the potential of la- some listed uh, companies. Uh, this will come quite a surprise to many investors. Uh, why do you say so? Uh? Yeah, so we have 921 uh, companies uh, okay. listed on Bursa itself. Okay. Uh, and we're trying to measure the performance using 30, right? So okay. granted, they are based on weightages. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one of the things that uh, we found uh, v- very interestingly is that if you look at the export value of Malaysia, okay. um, almost 50% of our exports are into integrated circuits, which mm-hmm. means semiconductor. Mm-hmm. But in the top 30 stocks, we can't even find one semiconductor company. I see. Okay. Yeah, uh, and and if you look at this, uh, if you look at the index itself, um, they are very very heavy weightage on banks. Actually. Okay. So what about price earnings uh, ratio? Is that too conventional or P ratio is not enough available uh, to well evaluate a company? So I think most investors use P ratio yeah, as a con- guide. Conventional, right? yeah. Uh, okay. Conventional, but. I think we have to factor in a lot of factors, right? Okay. So I'll give you some examples. Uh, if you're in a business that is very cyclical mm-hmm. or, or what I call uh, retransactional, right? Okay. Which means like contract-based, big pro- yeah. uh, big projects, right? So what happens is that your profits go up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay. So using a PE for that actually d- doesn't do a lot, right? See. Um, but it's very good for a relationship business where it's long-term, right? Okay. Uh, and also you must factor in what growth area are they in? Because if they're at a very high pace, you know, PE is a very wrong indicator. But then you use a lot of uh, variables. So basically what you look for in a listed company, and I'm sure you look at profit like you said, and yeah. PE ratio, what are the other yeah. variables you look for? Huh? So we like cash flow. Cash flow is very important, okay. right? Uh, mm. We definitely need to look at management, okay. right? Uh, why? Because uh, we want to make sure the management is there. Uh, they also do a good job <laughs> to make sure they give us the returns. You know? Okay. So, um, and, and yeah, and the industry is very important for us. Yeah. Okay, I see. So another uh, uh, talking about dividend payments and things like that. Uh, do Malaysian companies pay more dividends uh, compared to other markets in percentage terms? And I think this is a reflection of the profitability of the companies. Uh, maybe the slide will show. Eh? Yeah. Uh, oh, actually, we find that uh, there's a lot of uh, value in um, the in the Malaysian market. If you look at 921 stocks, almost 267 companies mm-hmm. uh, have been paying dividends continuously for the last uh, 10 years. Okay. Right, so that's a that's a twenty eight almost thirty uh, percent ratio. That means uh, one out of three stocks uh, pay very good dividends. I see. So well, how are companies on Bursa Malaysia doing? Because I think uh, the prognosis has not been too uh, encouraging over the past uh, year before the election, after the election. So basically, when you have a look at how the company is doing, how are they doing? How do you assess their performance? Eh? So. Again, you know, we don't like to go on hunches. But, but based on the reporting season, you know, I yeah, think they yeah. did quite well. Right? <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think we don't go on hunches. So okay. uh, actually, in, a, in a, one of the slides that we shown earlier, uh, yeah. uh, if you look at it, out of 921 companies, okay. um, actually this reporting season, yeah. um, we are actually lower. I mean, companies are reporting yeah. less profits okay. uh, than they were this, this quarter versus right. one year ago. I see. So, yeah. anyway, uh, what about uh, some of the announcements uh, to scrap the projects and all that would have uh, affected the companies? And what about foreign? Uh, because that also affected uh, foreign uh, institutions and all that. So, what about uh, the inflow or outflow of foreign institutions in on Bursa Malaysia? So, on the on the inflow, like the previous slide that we sh- saw earlier, uh-huh. um, what actually happened is we've actually tracked it every month, right? Okay. So, post GE, uh-huh. um, what we've been seeing is that specifically foreigners, uh, foreign fund managers have been net sellers uh-huh. every single month until last month, right? Uh, okay, but yeah. you can see the 
that degree is getting smaller and smaller. So that smaller. the rate indicates that the selling is there. Selling is there, yeah. But it has kind of tapered off uh, right now, huh? Yeah, it's tapered off. So yeah. we're still going to wait and see. Uh, but you can see immediately after the election, um, okay. there was a massive net sell. Right? Okay. That's, that was because of the announcements to scrap some very big projects. Yeah. And I think the government has to get its act together. And I think a lot of uh, news will be coming out in the budget and all that, you know. So yeah. what about component stocks? When you look at the component stocks, what do you look for, you know? Uh, if we look at the component stocks, uh, if you see on the slide, you know, but like I mentioned earlier, banks are very, very heavy weightage. Yeah. Um, uh, actually, what we notice is that uh, the index, you know, not, not so much of a, um, a, a fair measurement so much because there are a lot of stocks that we don't cover that are doing very well, right? Like, 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 like you're talking sectors. What are the other sectors that are really like uh, investors should look for, you know, for potential earnings and future growth earnings and all that? You know? So I can so I can only comment what have really happened. Uh, um, so semiconductor is a very interesting space right now. Okay. Uh, simply because, you know, we all know that Trump and China are having a trade war. Yeah. Um, and Trump, is, Trump is having a war with everybody now. Well, well everybody, <laughs> yeah, correct, right? So, so they're actually expecting um, Malaysia to be a winner, uh, okay. meaning that because we have a large base for semiconductor okay. um, manufacturing. Okay. Uh, so if they can't import from China, they can import from Malaysia. I see. That's left to be seen, you know, because uh, yeah. and they're waiting to slap another 200 million worth of... Uh, uh, tariffs against <coughs> China again yeah. and all that. So, what are the other sectors uh, besides consumer electronics and all that? And yeah. banking, the big boys will look for banking. What are the other sectors that portfolio investors can look for? I think in terms of uh, sectors, we need to watch the ringgit, right? Uh, so, so if the ringgit is strengthening, um, okay. watch out for uh, companies where okay. a big part of the import is actually um, you know non-ringgit denominated, let's say US dollars, right? Okay. So, you got to watch uh, how sensitive you are versus... Um, uh, versus the ringgit versus the USD. I see. So uh, the the thing is that uh, as far as equity tracker is concerned, uh, uh, I got the idea that the mm -hmm. person who gets equity tracker he buys and sells, which means mm -hmm. it would stop broking firms and remisers also look to your uh, product uh, to use it uh, to keep themselves informed. Yeah. But is that enough time, you know, you know, to study the whole gamut of information and to make a quick investment decision? Because markets can go up like at ten yeah. o'clock and move down <coughs> at ten thirty. You see? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, the whole reason why we put it on online and it's a website, it's, not, it's okay. a tool, uh, is that yeah. it actually saves a lot of time. Mm. So we actually use technology to help us solve that issue, okay. right? Um, a lot of the numbers that are that are crunch, uh, actually, you don't need it live so much. Okay. Uh, a lot of numbers are. What we call fundamental or slow moving numbers mm. yeah so so it, it's a it's a tag on to what they are really analyzing but you're giving so much of numbers and you're talking about investments based on all this uh, uh, information and make very good investment decisions but that doesn't uh, roll out the fact that a lot of the decisions made on the market is speculative in nature you know yeah. so you get a speculative place can you say about that I mean how how far does speculation affect the investor as opposed to like you say investment decisions based on equity striker yeah, uh, I think I think speculators will always be there, okay. uh, regardless of any market that we're in. Yeah. Right, that's what makes the market exciting. Anyway, I see. right? Uh, I don't think we can completely eliminate them. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we try to do is to help educate. That means a lot of people unknowingly speculate, okay. which means they are speculating without knowing they're speculating. Okay. Right. Um, but because the, I want to ask back that same question asked. That means there's money to be made even in a down market if yeah. you know your information very well. That's right. I yeah. see. Because, so because the returns that you showed uh, compared to S and P and all that, yeah, equity tracker has done better than others. Eh? Yes, correct. Yeah. I so see. we use this, you know, strategy called value investing, where we actually use data to back up what we pick, mm. uh, and we realize that um, we find that there are many companies that survive many recessions, okay. not just one. Uh -huh. So, but the great thing is that uh, companies that survive, uh, what happens when the market comes down? Uh -huh. They get sold at a way cheaper discount, and that's where we get the opportunity to actually uh, go long and uh, actually make some upside from that. I see. Because that means they have to have two things. They need to have equity striker and they need to have the stock broker to buy and sell for them. Oh, definitely. definitely. Equity striker just provides uh, that information to okay. make that decision to help you make it easier to have an informed decision. Okay. Right? And just not a gut feel but it has to be done on, on, on something factual, right? I see. Uh, what is your prognosis for the stock market uh, maybe in the next few months uh, under the budget or even early next year? Uh, look, I mean, it's uh, obviously sounds very doom and gloomish. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> no, nothing we are not used to. But uh, you said that you can even make money in a down market. Huh? Yeah. So tell me how. <laughs> so they, these are extremely fantastic opportunities. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, if if you look at it, um, all these uh, major announcements are mostly uh, what I call a man-made, right? Okay. So uh, as easily as they can put in a tariff, as easily as they can cancel it, right? Okay. So uh, I I think I think it's you know life will still go on. Okay. All right. Uh, life will always find a way, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that uh, money will still flow to where it's best treated. 